Hey collectors, welcome to Star Wars Collected. I'm Jonathan. If you're new here, I hope you consider sticking around and subscribing. But if you've been here before, I want you to hit that like button harder than a rocket assisted punch from Bo-Katan because what I have for you guys today is the new Black Series helmet of Axe Wolves. Let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. Axe Wolves, Axe Wolves. I'm not exactly sure. I feel like it's some sort of take off of Wolf again, right? The spelling of, of Wolves being a Dave Filoni creation, I'm sure in some way. But uh, this helmet is uh, brand new as time of recording. I just got it yesterday and I think it's just now starting to hit the shelves. This is another Hasbro Black Series helmet and we're going to check it out. Each time they seem to do something a little bit different as far as how they add paint and how they add weathering. So even though this helmet is not going to be dramatically different than the ones we've seen in the past, I am still excited to see it. I thought that the one that we got for Death Watch, the saturation on it was a little off. It was a little less saturated than what I had expected to see. And looking at the box art on this one, this one looks to be a little bit more saturated. So I'm excited to see what it looks like inside. But let's go ahead and start here with the box on the outside. Black Series now is very famous for this kind of shaped box. They always take this corner here to kind of put in some art. On the figures, you can line them all up and it kind of makes this cool uh, you know, mural type thing. You wouldn't be able to do that with the helmet, but you still kind of get that same thing. Got a little profile shot there, straight on from the side, but you have some cool type of electronics on it. If you're into electronics, it's gonna have a little LED built into the visor thing that flips down. I'm not a huge fan of electronics in these pieces. I don't tend to keep batteries in mine because they become corrosive over time and I'm probably not gonna take the time to pop some batteries in just to light up an LED for 20 seconds before I become bored with it. But if you happen to actually be buying this for a kid, that's great. I think that probably 80% of these end up going to someone like myself, uh, someone probably like you, who is a collector and is going to probably put this on their shelf as a display piece. What bothers me is when they add the electronic features and it comes at the cost of the accuracy. But on the Mandalorian helmets, they really haven't had too much of an issue. So go ahead and grab some paperwork here. The white one's always really boring, but the black one always kind of has some instructions about how things work on it. So you got the outside here, opening it up, and it's going to show you how you put the batteries in. That goes underneath the little viewfinder thing. Click the viewfinder in, it kind of has that little hard hat type design on the inside so you can adjust it to fit your noggin and then on the back here it shows you how that moves and rotates around and uh, these have a little black piece that moves out of the way so that when you have that viewfinder down you can actually see through it if you wanted to um, i always keep mine plugged in of course so it looks a little bit more accurate now it's funny hasbro has been doing their best to move away from plastic and in doing so they've changed how they wrap the helmets. They used to come in a bag, then they kind of went to tissue paper. Now they're in tissue paper, but they seem to then wrap it in tape, which I think tape is made out of plastic. So I'm not exactly sure, you know, how, how much we're saving the world here with this method. And this one's actually taped in, which I don't always remember being the case in the past. All right, popping it out. In the bottom here, we have our viewfinder and otherwise just a bunch of plastic to keep everything padded and in good shape. So Axe Woves is part of Bo-Katan's Mandalorian clan and he showed up when we first saw Bo-Katan, then kind of disappeared for an episode. We weren't quite sure how or why. And Cusca Reeves kind of got the bigger set piece for that one when there was sort of a bunch of you know, badass ladies going through that imperial ship of Moff Gideon's. But then Axe Woves in the latest season, season three, has quite a bit to do. He, at the end, ends up sort of doing a kamikaze move, but hops out at the last minute and kind of destroys Moff Gideon's imperial base. So, you know, his actions were pretty big. And when they kind of kicked Bo-Katan out of being their leader, uh, he sort of stepped in as the new leader. So hard to say whether this character will end up being something that we continue to see in Mandalorian season four and as part of the Mandalorian story. His character at least seems to be positioned as sort of a you know right-hand man type thing. All right, so we have it out here and right off the bat, I can say that the saturation on this color is much higher and much more akin to kind of what I perceive their colors being. Without the deco, it's actually a little too bright. You can see on here how kind of bright blue that is, almost like a, like a Muppet blue. But with the deco on here, uh, with all the weathering and things like that, that helps tone it down a little bit. But let's go ahead and take a peek here. This area here is where the batteries will go in to control this. These pieces snap into here. 
click the button on the side, it slides down. And again, you have a little panel on top here. This moves out of the way and you can then see through it if you wanted to have it next to your head and be able to see through it. Uh, interesting that the top of this panel is black. I'm not sure if I ever saw what the top of his rangefinder looked like, but odd that it seems black on here. Axe Wolf's helmet kind of stands out because it has this ring around the outside edge. When the prototype Boba Fett helmet came out, I had bought an extra one because I was gonna repaint one as Axe Wolf's thinking, Hasbro will never make such a small character's helmet. And here we go. So uh, now that they made this one, I'd love to see them make Costco Reeves as well. And then we'd have a nice collection of Bo-Katan, Costco Reeves, and Axe Wolves here on a shelf, which would be, I think, a pretty cool uh, Mandalorian setup. I actually got some really nice paint on it. It definitely stands out almost as if it's like a separate piece. There is quite a bit of hawking and things of that nature. It looks very similar to what we've seen on all the different Boba Fett helmets and things like that. So I'm guessing that we're dealing with the same mold here. Again, I don't blame them. Uh, I'm happy to have a different kind of helmet in the collection. And if they can make it by saving a little bit of money, that's great. Got the little key slots here in the back. Those are looking really nice. And there's actually a little bit of mesh behind that. And this is where I think where Black Series really shines and something that I like about their helmets. They spend a lot of time making a really, really nice interior. So you can see all the different little pads in there. Here's that sort of hard hat adjustment thing, but there's all these details that go through here that make it look much more real, much more interactive. It's almost a shame that when you put this on a shelf that no one really ever gets to see that. Let's go ahead and look at the electronic features on this helmet. Uh, it is fairly basic. Some of them have voice changers and things of that nature. This one simply just has a couple of LEDs on this. So when you tilt this down, uh, there's a little trigger down here and you'll see these little LEDs move back and forth. And that quite frankly is it. Now, uh, because I love you guys so much, uh, and I like humiliating myself for you, uh, I will put the helmet on and you can see it for yourself. It's a uh, kind of low part of the ceiling right here in this area and I'm six, seven, so it might be a little bit much, but I will go ahead and adjust the hard hat thing in here to be about as big as the dome can be. We'll put this on and I can't see anything with it on. <laughs> so it doesn't really fit my head. You can see my chin is probably sticking out of the bottom here and my eyes are uh, about right here. So what I would probably do is actually, if I had to wear this thing, is probably remove this hard hat apparatus in there. If you uh, happen to be a six foot seven man, it might be a little bit too small for you, but this is approximately what it looks like when one is wearing it. Uh, you know, not particularly comfortable, but again, I think at least 80% of the people buying this are like you and me. We're looking for a cool helmet to put on our shelf. And once again, Hasbro delivers. You know, these things are not all that expensive. This one I think was about 125. My guess is that you're gonna be able to find this one under $100 within a few months, maybe within a year. I don't blame Hasbro. I actually love that Hasbro reuses their molds to give us additional characters. It does boggle my mind that we have an Axe Woves helmet and we don't have like a big Dark Lighter helmet or any of the other X-Wing pilot helmets other than Wedge and Luke. Um, that to me is a little perplexing. What I haven't done is taken a look at how they decorated this and compare it directly to screenshots of Axe Woves and see if the, you know, the marks and all that stuff are in the right place. But I think when you look at this, it's pretty unmistakably Axe Woves from The Mandalorian. All right, collectors, well, there you have it. Axe Woves helmet from Hasbro The Black Series. I'm a really, really big fan of Hasbro The Black Series. They make some of my favorite helmets, and I love that they, you can pick them up for 100 to $150, something like that. Uh, I pre-ordered mine through Amazon, and by the time it shipped, it dropped in price a little bit. They refunded me the difference. It was five or six bucks, but still nice to see. I've also pre-ordered stuff from GameStop, uh, Big Bad Toy Store, um, Target before as well. Uh, I've never had any issue with any of them, um, but those are kind of my recommendations on places that I've used and have been happy with. Uh, I don't know what else I would ask out of an Axe Wolves helmet. Uh, again, I'm not the biggest fan of the electronic features. I'd rather them not put those in and save another 10 bucks or something. But uh, on this type of piece, it doesn't affect how accurate it is. You know, it's still so much of a play toy. There is some uh, seaming here and there and some places where the panels go in, but this is gonna sit on the shelf. I'm gonna see it and be like, oh, Axe Wolves, how cool. Guys, hop down in the comments. Let me know what you think of this helmet. Let me know what Hasbro Black Series helmet you want them to make that they haven't announced yet. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like uh, and sharing it and things like that also helps a small channel like mine grow. If you're into helmets and one-to-one -one props and hot toys and statues and stuff like that, I have a whole bunch of boxes back here if you can see them. Uh, and those are all things that I need to open with you guys here. I've got some cool sets coming up, even stuff, stuff over here. We're overflowing with Star Wars cool stuff. So uh, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of that. 
Also make sure you follow me on Instagram. It's a place where you and I can connect a little bit more directly. I'm always putting up good deals that I see on there, new announcements, little fun polls, little memes, things like that. It's just a place where we can talk about Star Wars, which is always fun. So uh, guys, I think that's it. See ya.